As global temperatures rise and erratic weather continues across the planet, people around the world are searching for a solution to climate change. One solution to this crisis may be found in the ground beneath our feet. Scientists, researchers, and land stewards are now studying soil and the carbon cycle as a biological solution to climate change. Through photosynthesis, plants absorb carbon from the atmosphere. The process of converting atmospheric carbon dioxide into soil carbon is called the carbon cycle. The carbon cycle uses sunlight, plants, soil, and microorganisms to turn CO2, a climate change causing gas, into soil organic matter. But the soil that can help us solve the climate crisis is disappearing. Soil is, is kind of one of the unsung heroes, um, possibly our saving grace when it comes to climate change, because it is one of those things that um, it's not a new technology. It doesn't require massive uh, investment in, in new systems. It literally is pay attention to what's there and try to rehabilitate what we've lost. It's, it's a solution right under our feet. We don't really have to do too much except not destroy it. Most of us are unaware that beneath our feet lies a vast world teeming with life. We depend on this valuable natural resource called soil. Fertile soil supports plants and provides us with oxygen, medicine, food, fiber, and building materials. Soil is home to countless species, nature's ultimate recyclers, that turn waste into value and feed the plants that in turn feed us. Soil purifies our water and is a natural reservoir for atmospheric carbon. Civilizations rise and fall due to their management of soil. Our survival depends on protecting and regenerating this important natural resource, this living universe beneath our feet called soil. We've lost an estimated, some say 50%, some say 80% of our topsoil um, globally over the last couple hundred years through intensified farming practices. Um, and a big part of that soil loss, of course, is soil carbon loss. The implications are that, therefore, our soils have the potential to hold enormous quantities of carbon because we've lost enormous quantities of carbon. And so uh, the the potential reservoir is, is sitting waiting and we just have to adjust our management so that we are putting more carbon into the ground than we're, than we're allowing to escape. Every year, an estimated 24 billion tons of valuable soil is lost forever. There are many soils where we've depleted the carbon in them and where good agricultural practice could restore some of that carbon, which would increase the fertility of the soil. It would increase its ability to hold water. It would increase infiltration. You know, carbon in soil is just good for the soil and for the way we tend to use it. Um, but the carbon isn't going to move from the atmosphere into the soil by itself. You know, water runs downhill because it does. Carbon moves into the soil because plants take it up and they fix it into, into leaves and roots and then that stuff dies and decomposes. So, you know, when I look at the way an ecosystem works, I like to talk about, well, there's the life history of plants and there's the death history of plants. And it's just as important because what happens to a plant after it dies is what controls whether the, soil, the carbon ends up in the soil. But the death history of plants is also the life history of microorganisms, of, of insects, of, of worms, of bacteria, and of fungi. And those are all the things that I study. You know, so it's like, yeah, like, you know, I study dead plants, and they're pretty cool. Healthy soil is alive with billions of organisms, including fungi, bacteria, and invertebrates. 
We depend on the invaluable array of beneficial ecosystem services they provide. The soil food web is all the interactions of the different organisms that exist in soil performing all the processes to help plants grow in a healthy fashion. So the plant can have all the nutrients that it's supposed to have. It's not going to be subject to disease or uh, insect pests. We don't have to use inorganic fertilizers if we've got a good healthy food web. All those interactions are, are going on. Um, building soil structure, so water and oxygen move into the soil, um, making nutrients available back to the plant. So it's all of those sets of interactions. So if the soil food web microbes are what actually cause a plant to grow, assist it, immune system, food support, all of that, and we're a society that relies on food resources grown in the soil, uh, then I don't see any way around it but to say that all of a civilization is reliant on the health of the soil and the soil food web microbes. In nature, animals play an important role in building healthy soil. By mimicking natural systems, ranchers and land stewards can increase soil fertility, improve animal health, and store more carbon in their soil. The type of, of grazing that we're doing here is management intensive grazing. And there's a few other names for it. People also call it mob grazing. And the general idea is you get a big mob of cows and you get them in an area of grass where they can eat all the grass in one day and you move them on to the next place and then you don't bring them back until the grass is fully mature again. They will graze the area they're in in 24 hours. So at this time tomorrow, we'll be moving them one step forward. Nature likes to farm with animals. Nature has always farmed with animals. Bison running across a big plain and stopping and eating is a form of agriculture in a sense. I know that sounds kind of crazy, but if you go back, that's what they were doing. They, there's a relationship between grass and grazers. It goes back millions and millions of years, not with cattle, of course, but with herbivores wild herbivores eating and moving on. So that, that relationship between grass that grows and it gets eaten and the roots go out and the roots grow up and all that sort of stuff has been going on for a long, long time. And what many ranchers that we work with are trying to get back to that model, back to sort of nature's image of grazing in arid and semi-arid landscapes. Um, and once you start mimicking that, then you have healthier ecosystems. And now we know that, that means more carbon sequestered in soils. So it's really, really a nice loop all the way around from the sun to the soils to the plants to the food uh, to you. So we've actually never grazed this area uh, with electric fencing. This used to be harvested with our tractors. Uh, so this is, you know, a real uh, change, basically, a real conversion in a a more sustainable way of doing things. So we're in the process of learning how we do this and, and so far we've seen really good results. And uh, it's pretty interesting to see what the cows actually do here. Here they come. In terms of you know what they can do for us, they're much better at tilling up the soil. Um, you could see they leave you know, a lot of pock marks in the ground, and and they push in some of the green matter, and they allow it to compost better. Uh, they also allow these pockets where water can accumulate, so if it rains, we absorb a lot more water than a place that's been tilled flat because there's all these little cups, essentially, that can catch the water and let it slowly filter in. It also increases the surface area of the field by making it more corrugated, so there's more places for seeds to germinate. The beauty of, of all of this is that anyone who has the, the access to a piece of land, and it could be your backyard, it could be a flower box, um, has the capacity to participate in this process. So really it's about just getting out on the land and engaging with it um, intentionally, um, knowledgeably, but 
proactively to begin to accelerate the rate at which we're building soil carbon. Climate change and our impact upon the environment will determine our future. Anything that we do to increase soil fertility is a step in reversing climate change. We can take excess carbon out of the atmosphere and put it to beneficial use in the soil. There is a solution to climate change waiting just beneath your feet. Thank you.